the little song is all I need, okay? We'll have to do it a cappella. We'll do it two times. All right. He's all I need. He's all
people can be as mean as a rattlesnake. And they can say some things that causes a wound that takes years and years to heal. And sometimes it does hurt. And it's not easy. And those wounds, they go deep and they cut hard. Especially when you feel like they turned on you and they, they despitefully used you and abused you and they're jealous of you and they're envious and they do things just to spot you. And that's hard to hang in there when you get wounded inside. Mama used to tell me sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Mama told me a little fib. Because I have found out that words hurt. Amen. Oh yeah, and sometimes it's hard. It's hard for me to hang in there. That's why when you come to church, you to keep your words seasoned with salt. Amen. You have to go up to your brother and try your best not to be a discouragement. You have to put a lid on that mouth of yours that ought to be, shouldn't be gossiping and running people down. You are not be telling people how bad they are and gossiping Amen. behind their back. It's hard enough to hang in here, isn't it? Amen. We need to come to the house of God encouraging one another When our feelings get wounded, it's hard to hang in there when our focus gets worldly. Oh, my brother. Sometimes if you get careful, you get a worldly focus, and all you'll think about is a dollar. Yeah. And a dollar. Well, i got to go make this dollar. And if you ain't careful, that dollar will consume you to the point where to drag you slap out of church. Yes, right. right. And it starts very simple. It starts, you'll miss, well, I'm tired, I've worked hard all, well, all day, Wednesday night's gone, poof. And then you'll say, well, i only got one day a week where I really enjoy my time off, and that's Sunday. I'll go Sunday morning, but Sunday night will justify it. I'm just going to take it off and spend time around the house. Yeah. So Sunday night's gone, Wednesday night's out of the picture, and before you know it, Sunday morning will be a, a kind of a miss and a hit and a miss and a hit. And then you think, well, my goodness, how the world did I get in this shape I'm in? What it is, the devil told you a lie that you ought to stay out of church because you need to work all week long. When listen, I know we gotta make money, we all gotta make a living, and thank God for people that work hard and never like yeah. a dead being no how. Amen. But don't let a dollar keep you from the most important Amen. thing in life, and that is your relationship with the God. We're more hung up on the blessings than they are the blesser. And if your job is taking you away from God and not trying to help you get closer to God, you better check up. My relationship with God my whole life revolves around my relationship with God. Everything about me. If my relationship with God suffers, guess what? My relationship with my wife is going to suffer, and my relationship with my church family is going to yeah, suffer. Yeah, if yeah. I start getting away from God, then I'm not going to be able to fulfill the responsibility of a preacher and a pastor. And it's important that all of us remember this. By the way, some of y'all wouldn't even be together if it wasn't for the grace of God. Yeah. And He'll put you back together. We don't need less. Sometimes Demas was an example of that heaven of this world. He yeah. forsook Paul. I've been there, brother. It's hard to hang in there when our faith gets weak, our feelings get wounded, our focus gets worldly, but when our friends get wavered. It's hard to hang in there when somebody you're close to ain't hanging in there no more. Yes, yes sir. Brother. Yes, sir. Huh? That's good, brother. You say, well, preacher, I, I don't get close to people don't hang in there. Just wait. Yeah. And by the way, it's only by the grace of God any of us to stay in Amen. 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 I've said it before, I'm being a pastor here now, almost 16 years, I've seen a pile of them come and go. Oh, yeah. A pile of them. And guess what? Don't let this scare you, but this is the truth. They some of you in here, but if you ain't careful, you'll be gone. You're right. You're Give them a little time. Something will happen to draw you away. Why do you have a friend that
that you taught Sunday school with get wrong with God and get out of church. You talk about making it hard to come to church when your little clip's going and you ain't got nobody to fellowship with no more. That makes it hard. Huh? Because a lot of times we rely on each other when we come to church to be each other's strength. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say, preacher, why in the world should I hang in there? If for no other reason other than your own self, you're to think about the other people you're going to affect if you don't hang in there. Amen, right. preacher. That's good. You're right. It makes it hard when I see somebody getting away from God. Yes, it does. One of the hardest things is a pastor. Brother Harry, you've pastored, you know this. Dad, you've pastored, you know this. Uh, is when you've invested. Yeah. Nights, tears, Time in people's life. Miss Amanda, your daddy pastor, you've seen him do this for years. And then it's as if they don't care over time and they forget about it. And you watch those people whom you have invested so much into get completely out of the things of God and away from church all year. That hurts. And if you're not careful as a pastor to make you spooky as to who you need to invest in. Because you think that they don't care no more. Yep. Yep. Always quiet. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. You put your life on the line to try to encourage people. These people that ought to be in church tonight right here. Some of them ain't because they're lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't we having fun? <laughs> yeah. Right, Richard. It's something we go to church, have 247 or nearly 300 on Sunday morning, come back on Sunday night, thank God for those that are here, and then it looks like the Pew family showed up. Can <laughs> 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 I tell you what it is? Their focus ain't right. It's not where it needs to be. They say, preacher, should we be just No, don't you be just middle. By the way, you better encourage them all you can. Amen. 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 Don't ever point a finger or throw a rocket. Amen. Amen. There. Amen. That's the worst thing you can do is get a bad attitude around yeah. that laying out of church. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where you ain't no better than that. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, let me give you three things that ought to help you hang in there now. You ready? Paul mentions them here in this chapter. Three things that ought to help us all to hang in there. First of all, number one, it should help us to hang in there when we remember the tomb that's empty. Look at chapter, the same chapter. Look at verse number three. In fact, the verse chapter, chapter 15. Notice what Paul says in verse number three. He says, For I have delivered. Unto you, first of all, that which also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Yeah. Look at verse 4. And that He was buried and that He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you what ought to make me and all of us hang in here is the fact that He got up from the grave yeah. and alive. We don't serve a dead Savior. We yeah. serve a living Savior. Yeah. You look at ISIS and all these Muslims over there worshiping Muhammad yeah. and killing people for the sake of our Number 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. Look at verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. You want me to tell you what he said? He said, You've got a faith that's certain because Jesus lives. Yeah. You can rest your hope and trust in him in the fact that he is resurrected. I don't want to quit because Jesus didn't quit on me. We have a faith that's certain, but we have a forgiveness that's complete. 
If you look at verse 17 again, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Look at verse 20 again. But now is Christ risen from the dead. In other words, because He's risen from the dead, that completed the gospel as I mentioned this morning. And our sins are forgiven. You know, let me tell you why we ought to hang in there. It's because all of us look to be in hell and die without a bad broke, suffering a fiery pit of the day. But because Jesus rose from the dead, His blood was shed. Destroyed the goods of his house. Yeah. Give me take the 
picture I've got in what Jesus done on one of those days that he was dead for three days. I can see him going up to the devil's house, opening up the door, giving him a slap upside the head, grabbing the keys out of his hands, kicking everything around in his house, and saying, son, you might live here, but I'm in control of this. Mama. 
That's right. Thank you. Get it right here. Get it. I ain't going to quit. Yeah. I ain't going to quit. And that's what you're doing. It's kind of like this. Somebody told me one day in this little thing out here, the ladies had had a police officer come out here and talk about self-defense and how to defend herself, you know, and that was good. And one of the first things he said, you know, it kind of made sense to me. He told these ladies, and y'all remember this when I tell you this, he told these ladies, he said, one of the best self-defense weapons that you have is your attitude. When you get out of your car, you act like you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Amen. <laughs> Didn't he say that? In other words, act like you're bad. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> I know it'd be hard for Don Richburg to do it, but he could do it too. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. In other words, act like you're bad. When you get up there in the morning, you are tomorrow morning. I'm not saying you ought to develop that mentality, but when it comes spiritually minded toward the devil, you ought to get up, put your britches on. And just look at him in the face and say, you a loser. Yeah. I'm going on with God today. Yeah. You might not like it. <clears throat> and if you don't, here's a little grace of God for you. Hey, like right. that. The blood of Jesus is forgiven of everything. Look at him in the face, stick your head up in there and walk out for the glory of God. Yeah. 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 You say you mean all We walk around like a bunch of little weaklings, like I'm scared to death. No, I guarantee you he's more afraid of you than you are him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. He's conquered. He's a conquered foe, number two. Right. Let me give you a second point. How to hang in there. We're hanging in there because of the tomb that's empty. But number two, we're to hang in there because of the transformation that's expected. Look at verse 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. But I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So in this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. You know what he's saying? We're going to get a new body one day. Amen. Amen. We're going to get a new body. That's right. Thank Three God. things that tells me. Number one, there's coming a day that we will feel no more burdens. That's right. Thank God. What a bliss. Right. No more burdens. You know that thing you carry around with you all the time, every yeah. day you get up with it? Brother Wayne, you worried about your brother Steve? That's a burden. Brother Shane, Miss Janet, you worry about the issue you've got battling cancer? That's a burden. Some of you, you're worried sometimes, no doubt, brother, over here about, uh, about maybe your job and maybe about are you going to get sworn back in next go round? Some of y'all worried about your retirement or your kidneys or maybe you're worried about your physical health and maybe issues you're worried about your children or your teenagers you're worried about your retirement right. and how you're going to make it to you get to that age even if you do something you're worried about getting a job and paying your bills and having enough money left over to buy groceries from right. week to week yeah. and we carry these burdens around but those coming a day friend will feel no more burdens Amen. I'm getting a new body. I told you before, I'll tell you again, it's a good thing. I'm wearing this now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're stretching it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to know I was going to heaven in this old thing. How would y'all like to know going to heaven in a tea model? <laughs> huh? Now we get a new one. Yes, it's coming a day. This transformation that's expected, it tells me, assures me, there's coming a day when we'll feel no more burdens, but we'll fight no more battles. Amen. The battles we face, and usually my greatest battle is with me every day of my life. I battle me. Me too, Pastor. Trying to keep me off of the picture. Yes, sir. Me and my own thoughts. Me and my own mindset, 
me and what I think is right. Me, 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 me. Yes, sir. And I fight that battle every day of my life. And fighting this flesh, our nature, our desire to sin and, and, and do those things we know ain't right with God. Doug got quiet on me now. He should have said amen. I'm going to park there for a minute. Yes, sir. We're fighting the battle of sin. You want me to tell you when you're getting ready to lose the battle to sin in your life? Matter of fact, let me tell you when sin is about to consume your life and take over. Y'all ready for this? Yes. When you stop fighting. Oh, yes. When you stop fighting, that's when it's going to take over. And boy, sometimes it's hard pain. You know, if you're honest, the rest of it's lying. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. And I'm glad one day I ain't going to have to fight no more battles with myself. Yes. I don't have to worry about it. Amen. Won't that be wonderful? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you a third. I'm going to move my last point. This transformation that's expected tells me we'll feel no more burdens. We'll fight no more battles, but we'll face no more burdens. Oh, yes. Because we're going to be raised incorruptible. We're going to get an incorruptible, immortal body. I said this morning I didn't like grace, and I shared a few things about that. And still the same holds true. Sooner or later, you're going to have to go to a funeral, maybe more this year than you even expected. But there's coming time, there'll be no graves over yonder. Amen. Let me give you this last point I'm done. <clears throat> Should help us to hang in there when we remember the tomb that's empty, the transformation that's expected. But when we remember the triumph, that's extended. Look at verse 57. Here's our triumph, our victory. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you why we're going to hang in there. It's because we're winners. Yes, we are. Yes. Winners don't quit. And quitters don't win. But we have already been given the victory. Amen. All we've got to do is just hang in there. Amen. So true. Watch this. To give somebody the victory, that means he gave us the victory. It means we didn't do nothing to get it. He fought the battle. He won the yes, war. And he handed it over to us and said, now y'all enjoy the victory. Yes. It's hard just to get people to enjoy their Christian life. And really, that's all he wants us to do is just enjoy the victory. You're right. You're right. Everybody Have right. a good time. Amen. And I spend my time week after week, day after day, trying to encourage people and remind them that we do have the victory. Just enjoy what he's already done for you. Amen. Yeah. So, preacher, I'm so discouraged. We all get there, that's for sure. But right. are you forgotten that we he's gave us the victory? Yes. Amen. Yeah, but preacher, I'm fighting, I'm rising. We still have the victory. Amen. I'm a winner either way. Yes, sir. We all are. Watch this. He's given us the victory, and we have the victory, even though, watch verse 58. Our life hasn't been faithful. Look at verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Why was he telling them to be steadfast and unmovable and abound if they already was? Undoubtedly, some of them wasn't being faithful. And he was saying, hey, because he's given you the victory, you ought to be faithful. Amen. But just to turn it around and show you what he's really saying, he's saying Jesus gave you the victory He's already given us the victory even though our life has not been what it was supposed to be. Amen. Amen. <laughs> even though our life hasn't been faithful, but even though our Lord hasn't been first. Look at verse 58 again. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding the work of the Lord. In other words, he's telling them this because maybe, and I'm thinking, the Lord wasn't first in their life because they wasn't abounding in the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord was not a priority in their life, and we would not be telling them to make it a priority in their yes, life. You're right. But even though the Lord had been first in a lot of people's life, he still gives them the victory too. Wow! That's grace, friend. I don't care who you are, that's grace. Even when the Lord ain't first in your life. Let me give you this one. Even though their labor ain't been fervent. 
Look at verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. In other words, their life wasn't faithful, unmovable, always been the work of the Lord. Lord wasn't first. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Looked like maybe their labor wasn't first. He was encouraging them to go on in their labor. And you know what? Even though a lot of times people have heart, they serve God, they still give them the victories. Yes, sir. That's true. Even on mornings, when you don't feel like being a Christian and you labor for God ain't nothing, you still got the victory. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hanging in there. Sometimes it's tough. The average lifespan of a preacher in a Baptist church is 18 months. Still, it's been that way for years. Most of them quit and get out and throw in the towel and say they can't make it. And I can understand that. I can. Even though I've got the greatest church in all the world. It is a miracle that I'm not that I'm still here. It is. Sixteen years. One church. One group of people. But the truth be known, you give her three years. I told you about preachers. You give her three years and there'll be some of y'all that won't be in church. That's the scary thought. You know what Lord did? You ought to pray for assistant pastor that he hangs in there. You know what he does? I'm going to tell you what he does. Everything I don't want to do. What are you busy? Yeah. He's busy. Appreciate that, Joe. You ought to pray for your audio guy over here. Yeah. He's the one that downloads this first to the internet and then it goes to the video or, or video first, then audio. You ought to pray for your choir director. And uh, <laughs> You ought to pray for the secretary back there. Pray that she keeps her sanity dealing with the books and paying the bills for this church. And by the way, she shakes people's hands that she knows don't give a dime to this place. Boy, it's quiet now. She knows things about this church that I don't even know. And I don't want to know. You better pray for that woman right there. You ought to pray for her daughter too. She takes care of the mission. All these missionaries we support through Faith Promise that you promise that you're going to give and we're going to send money as a missionary Baptist church. Amen! Are we not a missionary Baptist church? Yeah. We believe in support missionaries, don't we? Yeah. There's one right back there. She takes care of making sure if there's anything I need to read and see, update missionaries, make sure all their support's in all across this place, all across the world. Pray for us. What about these deacons, Brother Darrell, back there? I know Joseph ain't here. He's got his hands full at home. Y'all better pray for him. <laughs> Somebody needs to tell him. Three is enough, not eight, all right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You ought to pray for these deacons. You ought to pray for the people, everybody in here. You ought to pray for the sound guy back there. He'll know how loud to turn the music up up here while they sing. I'm just picking on that. But pray for them. Somebody's got to do it. What about the groundskeepers? What about the church cleaners? Somebody's got to hang in there. And there's a lot of people hanging in in here. And we all need each other very, very much. Amen. Because we all feel like we. Yes. You better pray for this one right here, too. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And his wife said, Amen. <laughs> Amen, Miss Oh, I knew You didn't hear it. You know what I was talking about. Amen. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you one of the most challenging parts of ministry is dealing with young people. Youth. Teenagers. Drama. What about Master's Club? What about all the workers and the effort involved in taking care of so that, that ministry can flourish and your kids can learn about Jesus? It takes a lot. These little, all these people that work in that. What about guitar players? We've got one back there. 
Wayne, got one over here. For a pretty good seat tonight. I didn't know you'd fell again. If sometimes somebody made you look like that, they wouldn't live to see the sunset this evening. I promise you that. Be careful. What about a piano player? I'm trying to get into everybody. Right. One person quits, it affects everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, One person lets up, it affects the whole crowd. Amen. A lot of people think, well, the preacher is the most important one in the church. Let me tell you something. God works His plan and His order through the man of God in the local church. But there's a lot of people around the church, inside the church, that help make the man of God who He is. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen, brother. Don't quit. Hang in there. Johnny Hooper, you sing his song. We're going to quit and we're going to go eat something here in a minute. Or at least I am. <laughs> what was that, Brother Brown? And your mind made it. You sing that song, I got my foot on the rock. And my mind's made it. Amen. Man, I love hearing that song. Yeah. You better get your foot there and you better make your mind up. That's right. That's right. Amen. Right here. Make it up. Let's all stand up here. I know we don't have nobody to play the piano, but those who want to come pray, let's come pray and get around the altar tonight. We got to have a piano in order to get around and pray, that's for sure. Y'all come get around here. Let's pray and ask God. Maybe you know somebody. If you ain't going to pray for yourself, you'll pray for somebody else to hang in there. You better think you had a thank God you had a mom and daddy that hung in there too and didn't quit on you. That's right. Hang in there. Maybe some of you older ones want to pray for some of these younger ones. These young teenagers need to hang in there too. They need somebody to encourage them. You ever thought about the impact on a teenager when they see somebody quit? What a challenge. Be you therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So much as you know as you have had labor is not in vain in the Lord. I don't want to be a quitter. I don't want to be one that throws in the towel and drops the ball in my generation. God help us in our day to hold on to the bloodstained banner and not let it go. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord for the encouragement we've received from Your Word. Lord, even though sometimes it's tough, and Lord, we're not meaning to whine, but Lord, it's real. And Lord, life is real. And You understand that because You became flesh and dwelt among us. And Lord, we don't understand one iota of what You had to go through and experience in this life. But Lord, You know us in every detail. And Lord, You know what we battle with and what we deal with and what we go through. And Lord, You understand us even better than we do ourselves. And Lord, we know that we're all born with a quitting spirit inside us and only You through Your transformation can remove that quitting spirit that might lay on side somebody. Maybe there's somebody here tonight thinking about letting up a little bit or maybe going to draw back some. God, I pray tonight that you'd help us all to renew our zeal and our fervency for God. And Lord, may we have a new fire and a new mindset. And Lord, may we stick in there like Elmer's glue. And Lord, may we stay in the fight in the battle and not be swayed to the left or to the right. God, help us to be an example to the next generation and not falter in any way. And Lord, if we do, may we humbly admit it and confess it and repent of our sin and stay on the right path for the glory of God. May we never be ashamed of who we are, nor where we're at, or where we're going, or what you've done for us. And Lord, I pray you bless these people, give them a good week, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody's blessed.